خدا میں تیرے غلاموں کا نقش قدم ہے راہ خدا تیرے غلاموں کا نقش قدم ہے راہ خدا وہ کیا بہک سکے جو یہ سراغ لے کے چلے تیرے غلاموں کا نقش قدم ہے راہ خدا وہ کیا بہک سکے جو یہ سراغ لے کے چلے اور لہد میں عشق رخ شاہ قداب لے کے چلے لہد میں عشق رخ شاہ قداب لے کے چلے اندھیری رات سنی تھی چراغ لے کے چلے اندھیری رات سنی تھی چراغ لے کے چلے اللہ اور ماں کی بائی ہز ڈیوائن گریس اینڈ مرسی ہیز سینٹس ٹو دا دنیا ایز انسان اینڈ بلیسڈ اس ایون فردر ود ایمان وی آر انسان وی آر انسان اینڈ بیکاز بینگ انسان وی آر یونیک But we are even more unique because we are those insan who have iman. And that insan who has iman is real insan. That insan who has iman is a real insan because that insan who has iman believes in the Rabb who sent down the Quran. Believes in the Rabb who sent down Quran. So, When a person, an insan, brings iman, believes in the Qur'an, then Allah Almighty, by His divine grace and by His mercy, blesses that insan who brings iman, who believes in the Qur'an, and believes in that Nabi who brought the Qur'an. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah blesses him with ma'rifat and irfan. Allah blesses him with ma'rifat and irfan understanding insan ek receives ma'rifat and irfan in other words he reaches that level that you and i think of how to get there and yet reach there is sheikh abdul qadir jilani al baghdadi radiyallahu anhu reach there is sultan ul hind khaja khaja gan radiyallahu anhu Reach there de is Mahbub Ilahi Nizamuddin Awliya radiyallahu anh Reach there is Sabir Alauddin Ali Ahmad Kalyari radiyallahu anh Reach there is Sarkari Ala Hadrat Imam Ahle Sunnat Imam Ahmad Raza radiyallahu anh Reach there is Ghosul Waqt Sarkari Mufti Azam radiyallahu anh Reach there is Huzur Taj Shariya radiyallahu anh Reach there is Hujjat Al-Islam radiyallahu anh Reach there are all the Awliya And they reach there because of those Sahaba who became sincere slaves at the court of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay so all this is about what all this is about what it's about what ala hazrat taught us ke tere ghulamo ka naqshe qadam hai raah hai khuda tere ghulamo ka naqshe qadam hai raah hai khuda wo kya bahak sake jo ye suraag leke chale that the way to the court of allah is through the pure and the true slaves of the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why? وَمَن يُتِي الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ whomsoever has obeyed the Rasul has followed the Rasul he has been obedient to Allah he has been obedient to Allah and we are saying that insan is really insan when he has Iman, na? And one who has Iman, what should he believe in? The Quran. He should believe in the Quran. And when he believes in the Quran, what does the Quran say about Allah's most beloved Nabi? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does the Quran say about Sahib al-Awlaq? Hadrat Ahmad al-Mushtaba, Muhammad al-Mustafa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quran says about him. What does the Quran say about him? What is our Akida about our Nabi? That our Nabi is in Medina. But there is nothing hidden from the sight of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
There is nothing that is hidden from the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from the ilm of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from the nazar of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why? That same Quran that we have to bring iman in. If a person says, "I am a Muslim, I am a believer, I am a Muslim," and he doesn't believe in the Quran, he's a kafir. What is he? Uzure Mufti Azam Hind radiyallahu an. Uzure Mufti Azam Hind radiyallahu an says that when we gave the hukum of kufr based on the command of the Quran and the Hadith, then people say we are machine of kufr. He said this machine is not a machine of kufr. This is in reality passing the command that is given from the court of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even today, this mars is there. Even today, this there. How should we believe in the Nabi? How should we believe in the Nabi? The month of Ramadan is coming. The month of Ramadan is coming. The month of blessing, the month of purification, the month of tarawih, the month of zakat, the month of salah, the month of fasting. The month that when it ends, Allah will give you such a mubarak day that is called Yawmul Eid. The month in which Allah will give us a night greater than a thousand months. All that is coming. But how did we get it? How did we get it? We got it because of that Nabi. We got it because of that Nabi. Because of whom we have Iman. Because that Quran had it been revealed on a mountain. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من قشة الله. It would have trembled and turned to ash. It would not have been able to withstand the revelation. That Nabi, the Quran, was revealed upon him. Today, when you stand in salah and you say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, you say this because the Nabi told us this is Quran. Today, people say, and these Wahhabis and these Badmazab say, if Nabi ka khayal aja in namaz with the namaz bekar, if the thought of the Nabi comes in your namaz. Your namaz is gone. If the thought of your nabi doesn't come in your namaz, your namaz is gone. In reality, because when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, actually that is even distant. When you pick up your hands without which you can't start your namaz. When you pick up your hand without which you can't you start your namaz and you say Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Who told you? Who told you? Who told you this? The beloved of Amina. The sukoon of the heart of Hazrat Abdullah. That beloved Nabi. That whom Jibreel never used to get peace until he did not see him. That Nabi told us that Allah is the greatest. So when you even pick up this hand to start. And when you say Allahu Akbar even. When you say Allah is the greatest. Even that time your heart is saying that my Nabi told me this. Even that time your heart is saying my Nabi told me this. And that Quran is telling you about that Nabi. That Quran that you must bring Iman in is telling you about that Nabi. He's telling you the Quran is saying Allah is saying. What is he telling you? What is the Quran telling you? The Quran that you must bring Iman on. The Quran is telling you that this is that Nabi. That don't think that he is like you. Don't think he is. Like you, لا تقولوا رأينا. When the companions in the early days, because it is the way of the of the Bedouins and the way of the early Arabs, that when they would refer to somebody and they wanted their attention, they said رأينا. Look at us. Look at us. It was a blunt way of saying things. The Quran said, "Don't say that. Say, place your blessed sight upon us, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." Because it was the way that the shepherds used. Don't use that way for my Nabi. Why? That is what they used with everybody. But Allah said, don't use it for my Nabi. Because he is not like you. He is Muhammadur Rasulullah. Quran is saying he is Muhammadur Rasulullah. He is Allah's Rasul. And which Rasul? Ar-Rahman wa'allam al-Quran. You believe in the Quran. You have to accept and understand the Quran. This is the Nabi who Allah taught him the Quran. Allah taught him the Quran. Rahman taught him the Quran. And it is that Nabi whose beloveds, if you follow in their footsteps, we and you will be kamyam in this dunya and in the akhirah. Go into the court of Hazrat Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. 
going to the court of the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and look at the love that they possessed for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at how they kept fast when Ramadan came. Go back into the pages of history. Why is it? Why is it that we want to read the books of the modern orientalists? Why do we want to read the books of modern and, 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 and Western scholars to try and understand how to solve our problems? Why do we have to look towards so-called Western world figures to find solutions to our problem? If you want to find solutions to your problem, go into the court of that master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Learn from the Sahaba. Learn from the Sahaba when they wanted to get their daughters married and they did not have perfume in their homes, they went to the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they wanted to get their daughters married and they did not have perfume in their homes, they did not go first to a store. They did not go to the atar. They did not go to a shop where they get itar. They went into the court of Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they knew that that which the Nabi gives is the best. When that companion wanted to get his daughter married, he went into the court of Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, my child needs perfume. Why did he do that? Because it was his iman and akida That anywhere else I will get it. But I will not get what is from the court of Rasulullah. And the Nabi knew. This is my iman. And I know it's your iman. The Nabi knew that when that Sahabi came, he was coming for Pasina and Mubarak. The Nabi knew what he wants because our court of our Nabi is such. The Rasul is that Rasul that even before you enter his court, he knows what you are coming for. That is why he prepares and keeps it ready for you. That is why when that companion came, the Nabi knew what he was coming for. So the Sahaba taught you that when you can't get anywhere else, or even if you can get, but you want the best, go in the court of Muhammad Rasulullah. When Abu Huraira radiallahu and said to the court of the beloved Rasul, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inni asnaw minka hadithan kathira ansa. When he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I listened to so many hadith, but I can't remember them. Why did he say it? Why did he say it? Why didn't he say to Abu Bakr? Radiallahu anhu. Why didn't he say to Abu Bakr Siddiq, Radiallahu ta'ala, that I listened to so many hadith of Rasulullah, Abu Bakr, I can't remember, what should I do? Why didn't he say to Umar, Radiallahu anhu, Umar, I listened to so many hadith, I can't remember, what should I do? Why didn't he say to Uthman Dhul Nurayn, that I listened to so many hadith, I can't remember, what should I do? Why didn't he say to Mawla Aqainat, Mushkil Kusha, Haydar Qarrar, Ali Murtaza radiallahu an, that I listened to so many hadith. I can't remember what should I do. Why did he go to the court of the beloved Rasul? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I listened to so much hadith. I cannot remember. Because he knew my Nabi will not say go to a tabib. He knew my Nabi will not say go to a tabib. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he do? What did the Nabi do? All of us know we've discussed this many times, but the point to be made that when that Sahaba wanted perfume for his daughter, he went to Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa When Hadrat Abu Huraira radiallahu wanted to get some blessing and he wished that he should get a special blessing and his memory should be powerful, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Sahabi Rasul wanted Hadrat Sayyidina Rabiya radiallahu an, when he wanted Jannat, he took it from the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did they do that? Because they knew that this is the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is Allah's most beloved. And that is why Allah Hadrat said, Tere ghulamo ka naqshe qadam hirahe khuda. Take their footsteps. Follow their tariqa. Follow their footsteps. And you will reach the court of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well look, you and I want to follow and go to the court of Rasul Ipaq. We need to open the hadith. We need to look at the Quran. We need to look at the hadith. We need to look at what Abu Huraira said. We need to look at what Hazrat Bilal Habashi said. Radiallahu anhu. We need to say, look at what Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu said. We need to look at what Anas bin Malik said. We need to look at what all the other great Sahaba Ikram said. We need to see what the Tabi'een and the Tabi'i Tabi'een and the Imam Mushtahideen and the Awliya Kamilin said. But when the Sahaba Ikram would go to the house of anybody and Rasul Ipaq sallallahu had gone to bless that house and when they reached there, they found that the Nabi sallallahu was not there. Or they went to Masjid al Abu'i and they found that the Nabi was not there. He had left already. What did the Sahaba do? Did they have any GPS? 
Did they have what you have today? That put your map, put everything, and it will show you where to go, where something is, somebody is, that to half the time, غلط دکھاتا ہے. Right go left. Left go right. Turn now. 80 meters later, you have to turn. تب بھی غلط گئے. ہوتا کہ نہیں ہوتا ہے. But you look at the court of the Sahaba, they didn't have any system. They didn't have any system to plot where they need to go. I'm saying they had the best. They had the best system. The system was in their hearts. The system was in their hearts. And that system was called Ishqa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they came somewhere and they found that we could not find that Rasul Ipaq is there. He has left already. What did they used to do? They didn't used to go and ask that how do you get to where Rasul Ipaq is. They just stood outside and they took a deep breath. They just stood outside and they took a deep breath and they followed the blessed khushbu of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they would reach Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so follow the khushbu of those who followed the khushbu of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you and I will reach the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said to her and I started by saying that Allah has made us insan Allah has made us insan and he made us superior over all the people because of iman and not over the people of this time also over the people of all the time after the Anbiya and the Mursaleen. We, the Ummah of Rasulullah, have been made the greatest and the most exalted. That is why on the day of Qiyamah, when the Anbiya will be called in the court of Allah, and it will be said to them, did you pass the word? The Anbiya will say, we passed the word. We passed the message of Allah. And the Kuffar will object. The Kuffar will reject. They will say, you did not pass the word. And Allah will say that they are saying, you did not pass. And the Anbiya will say, we passed. Allah says, bring a witness. The witness will be Ummat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Ummat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be the witness. The beloved Nabi will be the witness unto all of them. How will this be? How will this be? Because we have got the status because of the Sadq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I said, insan, insan, but the status and the grandness of insan is when he brings iman. And when he follows and understands and loves the Holy Quran, and follows the Nabi upon whom the Quran was revealed. And what does Allah Hadrat say is that what is that Quran telling us? What is that Quran telling us? Allah kisarta baqadam shan. From head, from the sacred hair of his blessed and most exalted head. To the soles of his mubarak feet. From the hair. From the sacred hair of his Mubarak head to the soles of his Mubarak feet, he is the manifestation of Allah's manifestations. Allah kisarta baqadam shan hiye is the manifestation of the majesty of Allah. Insa nahi insa. A human, not like these humans is he. A human, not like any other human is he. Quran insa nahi insa. No insan here. But he is that most majestic human. He is that most majestic human that the normal humans can only stretch their hand this far. The Madina, the, the Madina's master Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stretches his hand to wherever he wills in the dunya. The ordinary human can only see as far as his eyes can go. And the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his cradle and he's seen the umun making sajda under the court of Almighty Allah. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are walking 10 steps, 50 steps, 100 steps, 500 steps, 10,000 steps. We are tired. The Nabi's one step is from here to wherever we do not understand. So that Nabi about him, the Quran and Allah Hadrat is explaining the verses of the Quran. He's explaining the teaching of the Quran. He says, Allah ki sarta bakadam shan hiye. Insan nahi insan. Oh, insan hiye. He's such a majestic human. The most majestic human. The Quran to iman batata hai inhe. If we ask Quran, who is he? Quran says he's iman. So insan, when he has iman. What is iman? To believe in Allah and the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all that which Allah and his Rasul have commanded them being brief. And who is the, what is the soul of that iman? Muhammad Rasulullah. Insan nahi, insan. Wo insan hai ye. Quran to iman batata hin hai. And then you ask iman. Quran saying he is iman. Iman, what is he? Quran to iman batata hin hai. Iman ni kehta hai meri jaan. 
Iman says he is my soul. He is my spirit. He is everything. So a man without the true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in reality is a corpse. He is a lash. He is nothing. The true life comes in man because of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how do you attain this love? You follow those who follow those who follow those who follow those until generations who follow those who follow the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you try to map your own path, and I'm ending in two, three minutes. When you and I try to map our own path, we will fall into the dungeons and into the abyss of hell. Today, there is this talk that there is no need to follow those from the past. We must find the solutions for the problems as per current day. We must find the solutions for all our problems as per current times. No need to look outside anymore. Just take from here amongst ourselves. No need to go outside anymore. Where did this thing come from? Where did this thing come from? From the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where did this knowledge come from? From the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until you don't look there, you will be nowhere. You will be nowhere. And in this zamana, he's a man. In this zaman, in our time, in my time and in your time, there is one man. There is one personality. Whom Almighty Allah blessed with being the sign of recognition of this deed. Allah Almighty made him the lamp amongst the assembly of the pious. So that through their blessings and all their blessings, we will see in this one lamp. And that lamp is called Allah Hadrat. Imam Ahl Sunnah. Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan radiallahu ta'ala an. And his way is called Maslaki Allah Hadrat. And in this time, if we want to be on the Naqshay Qadam of the Sahaba, if we want to be on the Naqshay Qadam of the Awliya, if you want to be on the Naqshay Qadam of Imam Abu Hanifa, if you want to be on the Naqshay Qadam of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, if you want to be on the Naqshay Qadam of Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, no perfect order, as I'm explaining, just as the names are coming to my mind. If you take each one of them and follow their way, if you want to be on the way of Hawse Adam, you want to be on the way of Hadrat Sayyidina Mahbub Subhani Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, you want to be on the way of Hadrat Imam Jalaluddin Rumi, you want to be on the way of Bayazid Bustami, you want to be on the way of all the beloveds of Allah, then you should follow the way of Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat Because this is the beauty of all of them. This is that one bouquet that when you open it up, you will see all the different flowers present in it. You will see all the different colors present on it. He has been made that huge, beautiful bouquet in which all these roses are present. If you hold the bouquet, you've hold, held all the roses. You've held all the roses. And this is what is important. And the reason I'm telling you this is because we are drawing near to Ramzan. I said it last week, I said it before that. That when Ramzan comes near, Shaitan is about to be tied up, is about to be bound and shackled, so he gives last push. How much is that? He wants to give the last push that before I get locked, let me lock all the others. Before I go inside, let me put the others inside. He gives the last push and he puts in your minds that do this, do this, do this, don't worry, whatever happens there, come see, come go to namaz par re, tum bhi wahan ja ke pad le ma. You to go read there, no problem. There to Hafiz, here to Hafiz. There to Quran, here to Quran. There to Tilawat, here to Tilawat. But there is a big difference. Here Tilawat is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And in the heart is saying Muhammadur Rasulullah is Rahmatulil Alameen. That is the difference. That is the difference. There, they are reading Salah. And their Akidah is that it is better to think of an ox and donkey in your namaz. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And here the Akhidah is that when you are in Salah 
and when you come to At-Tahiyyat, and when you send salam upon the Nabi, then remember that you are in the court of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa As if you are looking at him, and if you cannot look and understand that you are seeing him, then know this, that my Nabi is looking at me. This is what Huzur al Sharia taught us. This is what our Mashaykh taught us. So when we want to read our salah, when we want to do our ibadah, what does, the, what does Allah say about salah in the Quran? Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Namaz is that thing which protects you from obscenities and from evil. They say, if you tell me my child is not going on the path, I said this before. My child is not coming right. Grab him and put him on the musallah first. Put him on the musallah first. You won't change him, that ibadat will change him. Allah's mercy will change him. But Quran is telling us that this namaz is what protects you from obscenities and protects you from wrongdoing and erring. From going astray, the salah will protect you. So those who are reading and are still misled and still saying the Nabi doesn't know, then pata chala ki unki salah salah hi nahi. Clear? Because salah when it protects you from the worldly obscenities and from all those things that are munkar, the first thing it will do, it will save your iman. The first thing it will do, it will save your iman. So when you say those who say takbir, and after that they say, come on, let's stand up and say, As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Let's say, Mustafa jane rahmat pilaq wa salam. With sincerity, otherwise there are days, also today there are those who do this, but on top something, under something else. So you need to watch for that also. But then we know what is the right thing. So I'm ending with this, that the month of Ramadan is coming. We are around the corner from Ramadan. I don't know if I'm going to see Ramadan. And I don't know if you're going to see Ramadan. And you don't know if you're going to see Ramadan. Ramadan is going to see us. But we don't know if we're going to see. I want each and one of us, like we say in Urdu, Dil pe hat rakhe. Keep your hand on your heart. In other words, from the depths of your heart, ask yourself. Ask yourself, will I live to see Ramadan? I don't know. What am I going to do about it? How am I going to change my life? Today, every second thing, selfie. Every second thing, photo. Going for Medina, selfie. Going to Kaaba, selfie. Going into the toilet, selfie. Everything people want to do. Eating food. People say, Malana, I don't know what's happening. I can't eat anymore. No. Take more photos of your food and put it in your Instagram. Put some on your status. Let people see how much you eat. Nazar nahi lagegi, to kya hoga? Eh? They say, I don't know, Maulana, my wife is going off track. Put your wife's photo more on your Instagram. Toba la hawla wa la kota illa billah. Sharam ni aati? Where is our haya? Where is our shame? And then we want to say, we are following the deen of Allah, his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of Qiyamat, kya hasha ho? Before Ramadan comes, rectify our lives. Let's change. Don't say, I'm going to change tomorrow. I'm going to change when Ramadan comes. I'm changing now. Now I'm going to start now, right now. I'm making yet, we should each of us right now, before I end. I'm making you my witness. Today I'm making you my witness in the court of Allah. And I'm making toba through the sadqa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for every one of my weaknesses and my sins and my shortcomings that I know of and I do not know of. And I am hopeful of the mercy of Allah that Allah will forgive me. Ek me kya, meri siya ki hakikat kitni. To say, so la tu kafi hai ishara tera. I beg of you, even if you do not want to do it aloud, in your hearts, make toba now. If you have been gambling, make toba now. If you have been committing adultery, make toba now. If you have been doing haram and taking photos and pictures, make toba now. If you have been disrespecting your parents, make toba now. But first go ask them to come off afterwards. Until they don't forgive you, you won't be forgiven. Do it now. Do not say I will make Tawbah after I go home. Probably you will die before you get home. Nobody knows. Think about it. Be sincere. Change your lives. Allah grants change to those who wish for change. If you strive to change, Allah will change you. If I strive to change, Allah will change me. We should never think, we should never ever think that we are indispensable. We should never think that nothing can happen. Always remember and have this fear. That is why that is why, especially the scholars, that is why Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna radiallahu anh, one of the great imma and the great masters of hadith. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna radiallahu anh, he says that as long as a scholar does not keep in his mind that sometimes I will be able to say, I do not know. 
or I do not understand, he will be protected. But when you start to think that I only know, that's when the problem comes in. But when we say, now somebody may turn around and say, but you guys always think you all know. We know based on what our mashaykh taught us, so we know. We don't know on our own, we know through them. We don't know on our own, we know through them. If you keep this in your mind that you do not rely on your self-knowledge, well nobody has self-knowledge, knowledge is from Allah, but the knowledge that you have with you, which Allah has given you. If you rely on that, yes you need it, it's your tool, it's your, it's your means, but don't rely on that. That is a means, rely on the Rabb who gave it. Rely on Rasulullah sallallahu You will be protected here and in the hereafter. Otherwise that knowledge will not benefit you. As has this Imam Sufyan bin Uyana said, that knowledge will harm. Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman.